All right, so it's, uh, son las 12. Buenas tardes. Um, me llamo Jennifer uh, Rojas Coleman. Yo enseño español. My name is Jennifer Coleman. Hi, and I teach Spanish, introductory Spanish, one and two. Um, and I think those classes are, uh, I would say, the most important class if you're taking a, a language class, the introductory, because it's the foundation, right? So when I decided the title of uh, Surfing Through Murals of Jacksonville and also uh, Mexico City, I thought, what I'm doing, right? My field is literature and languages. In this case, is Spanish. What I'm putting myself through. But the, the, the reality is in our classes, in my class, in every language class in FSCJ, we teach uh, the language uh, practicing the different skills, which is the speaking skill, mm -hmm, writing skills, and, um, and the reading skills. But also we incorporate one of the most important, I would say segments and portions in our teaching uh, practice, which is culture. And um, in my class, we talk at the end of every chapter about the culture of these Latin American countries and also Spain, Spanish speaking countries. And, um, and I always kind of, uh, get short in time because like I want to go more well, right and my students are like come on let's keep talking but we need to keep going with our curriculum right with all the subjects that we need to learn so and this is one of the subjects that my students always want to talk more and get more passionate when we go to chapter four and we talk about Mexico from Mexico City so and, and, uh, and we talk about we start talking about Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera, right? And, uh, and when I present Frida Kahlo, everybody, everybody gets so passionate, like, let's keep talking about Frida. I love Frida, I want to be like Frida, I want to know, I want to go and visit the house of Frida. And then the poor Diego Rivera, her husband, just nobody cares for him. Like, why, right? I would like to have the whole term to talk not just about Frida, but about Diego, because Diego uh, was actually uh, the one who introduced Frida to the art, mm -hmm. in this case, to painting. So this, in this case, I thought, ah, this is my opportunity to talk about Diego and why Diego Rivera, it, is, it was important and it's still important today. But I wanted to connect Diego and his work with what we see here in Jacksonville, murals. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is my opportunity to, to talk about Diego this time instead of Frida Kahlo. So language cultura, as I mentioned, is important in our classes, in our language classes. But today we are going to forget about the grammar, right? For my students, grammar is like, <sighs> Let's keep talking about culture. Let's postpone grammar. But today we are going to talk about, in this case, culture. And I decided to have the surfing through murals. And I was inspired by my colleague, Brian Kim. He's a surfer. And he has been all over Latin America uh, surfing. So I said, Brian, what about surfing? He says, surfing, surfing. You know, surfing through these murals in a very easy, uh, fun way, without thinking that I am an expert. I'm not an expert in art. I don't know much about art, actually. But I am uh, familiar with the art that I grew up seeing in the, city, in the streets of Mexico City. Uh, it is a city with 20 million people, imagine. Um, the senses, your senses, what you see, what you smell, is, is um, it is, uh, how can I describe that? It's chaotic. Uh -huh. There is no order in any of the things that we see. However, the colors, the smell of things. And when uh, I started looking at the, um, I would say in the last 10 years in Jacksonville, what we have in our city 
I just start appreciating more and more this flourishing of art in the streets of Jacksonville. And that is why I choose this topic. Um, let's just start. Just for a quick second, mm -hmm. I apologize, everybody. It's more of your neck is so rubbing against the microphone. Hold that right up there. There you go. Gracias. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Gracias. So, <clears throat> as I said, I am not an expert in art. But I wanted to show, I wanted to show what is a mural, right? The simple explanation according to the dictionary, what is a large picture painted in a wall? Uh-huh. So if you want to, to think about a mural paintings in walls, let's start with that. But these paintings are and are considered public art. Uh-huh. And what is public art? There is a um, I did a lot of reading actually, it was interesting, it was challenging in the sense it's not my, my comfort zone, but the research that I started doing, it was, it was fascinating because there is so much written about um, these new oh, spaces, public spaces, used uh, today for murals to express art, and we're going to go a little bit in deep later. In, in, in when we start with this. But public art, according to uh, this Spanish researcher, Sanchez Luisa, public art has been since antiquity a succession of artistic manifestations around the spiritual, the religious, and the mythological figurative images, icons, and allegories. Uh -huh. If we see these words, those are uh, universal concepts. We don't need to be experts to understand even to understand, to interpret, right? A mural, a painting on the street. Because what we are going to see or what we see, it has been, it resonates with our own experience, right? With our own symbols, mm -hmm. as humans in this case. And, oops, let me see if there's this one here. Yep, this is fine. All right, so I'm going to start talking. Uh, I'm going to present you first what I'm more familiar with, the, the history of the mural time and era in Mexico. And we have one of the most important representatives of this time. I have to say Frida Kahlo's husband, <laughs> Diego Rivera, right? And I don't think Diego Rivera thought during that time that he will be called Frida Kahlo's husband instead of, you know, <laughs> the opposite. So that is, that is cool. So <clears throat> Diego Rivera, like um, Siqueiros and, uh, and other muralists during the 1940s period, that was the time that these artists were more interested in bringing to the, to the people in Mexico part of their history has, um, has we, well, probably you know this, but uh, Mexican history has been, the time of Mexican history during the 1910s, after the Mexican Revolution, it was, I would say, the most important moment for Mexican identity when it comes to the recount and the reclaim of those uh, cultures, pre-Columbian cultures. So we have these mur uh, Mexican muralists really reconsidering and using their art uh -huh, to reclaim that history. And Diego Rivera is the one who is, um, his mission, and he sees his art as a mission of represent the history. Other uh, muralists represent the the compromise that murals should have with social issues and social justice. I got, you mentioned uh, Colombian culture. Pre-Colombian. -col pre Pre-Colombian uh -huh. pre refers to previous to the Spanish conquest. Uh -huh. So previous to that, uh, we have uh, the, the cultures, the Mayan culture, the Aztec culture. So when we are referring to pre-Colombian, pre-Columbus, uh -huh. previous to Columbus, all right. So in Diego Rivera in this mural, and of course you see it here, kind of a, a regular size, uh, just to give you an idea 
this is a whole almost uh, one this wall I would say will cover probably one street uh -huh. uh, white when you are going up to these steps this is the National Palace and, and these artists use public spaces so their their idea is let's bring to the people mm -hmm, to the communities art because at that moment and I would say um, 1920s, 1930s, what they do is like, let's break with the uh, canon of the European uh -huh, way of representing the other. In this case, the, the people of these, uh, <laughs> of, these, of these countries. So what, what, they, what they are doing is like, let's bring the public, in this case, public spaces, public buildings, uh -huh, and let's start creating, representing us, representing the people. Mm -hmm. So what Diego Rivera does in this mural is, um, it is hard to see, but if you have the chance to, to, to look uh, online or in any of our books that we may have here, you will see that he uh, paints and portrays the chronological history of Mexico. Uh -huh starting with the, uh, what it used to be in pre-Hispanic times, the Mexican traditions, and from there go to the conquest, and from there to what he sees today, well, not today, but at that time, the, the uh, independence. Um, he wants Mexicans to know that, remember, there was an independence from the Spaniards, but then we have also a revolution from the dictatorship, right, that uh, it was, uh, this dictator was Diaz. So he's portraying the whole history of Mexico in this is a magnificent humongous canvas in Palacio Nacional in Mexico City. So we have the main theme for this artist, uh -huh, this muralist. There is this, during this time, what he said is the representation of the history, the representation of those people who had not been represented, who were those, indigenous people, right? And today, mestizos. Mestizos are, uh, we are called mestizos because it's, it's then when the national identity, the national pride of being Mexican is, is being born. Uh -huh. Because we are being represented through art as well. Not just through art in the, uh, created by the leaves, but created uh, by someone who is committed to uh, to tell the story. Um, let me go to this one here. Yeah. So the same thing, Diego, Diego uh, Rivera uses spaces, public spaces, and this is a, um, this is a mural that is painted in, um, in the um, Parque Chapultepec, at Chapultepec Park. It is in Mexico City and it's one of the largest uh, parks in, uh, in, in Mexico, actually. Uh, so what he's doing, he's um, using the elements that are already there in the park to bring the people enjoying it. But if you see, he's always, his constant element is always going back to what we are as a nation, right? As a nation, we are not only one uh, kind of looking person. We are a mix of different ethnicities. And, uh, is that, and, a, is that a walkway or is that a, a, a culvert for water? It's a culvert for water. Okay, mm -hmm. So people wouldn't walk in there? Uh, right. No. Is it tall? Or is it, it, is it is very tall, yes. Uh, what Diego, the spaces that Diego used, it was, uh, I, I would say, I have, the ones I have seen, the last one that I, show, I will show you is the only one that I will say is the, is the, the largest one. But Diego always used large, large spaces. And, uh, and the name of this one, uh, El Agua Origen de la Vida, the Water Origin of Life. Uh -huh. So he takes the elements, a universal element, as, uh, what water represents for humans, right? Surviving, right? The main element for us and as well the origin of life. But also he represents something that is, is new at that time. What is it? The water is not being found 
just in the reverse, right? They are doing, using machines to what? To find water, uh-huh. So the resource is not, he also tells us the resource is not easily available in the cities, right? Especially in this case, he's representing Mexico City. Um, and this one, <clears throat> we have another artist from the same period. He's Rodolfo Morales. Rodolfo Morales uh, painted these uh, in one of the high schools that is part of the Autonomous uh, University of Mexico. In this case, what is happening is like, wow, how can he paint, how, how he was allowed to paint something like this? Women, I was naked, right? In a high school. Well, for, for that, for this period and these artists, uh, the freedom of expression is the most important thing. In high school, that high school in Mexico City, it has been the, the, the high school that actually encouraged students for that to look for that freedom, uh -huh, the freedom of expression. And either way, it can be in the arts, in the communication science, in literature, in sciences, so it is, uh, it, of course, there is an, uh, in, um, in um, honoring women and women from different backgrounds as well. None of them look alike. So that is, that is the other side that these artists and these artists also are representing. You, you don't see only uh, in the work, you are not going to see European looking women, right? These women are mestizo women. Uh, dark skin, brown skin. So for them, playing in with the colors and uh, and also the, the different shapes and the colors and what is at that time is not pre-Hispanic anymore. The incorporation and the influence from the Spanish uh, uh, culture, right? The guitar. Uh -huh. It is not anymore these. A um, they are not incorporating in this case the pre-Hispanic. Um, um, tools that they were used to create sounds. That is another story with that one for Hispanic sounds. But and then we have a the the author. I mean the artist. This artist Rufino Tamayo is one of my favorite as well. Rufino Tamayo. He says, "Okay, you Diego Rivera and Cicados, you you do your job with the social justice for train the Mexican history. I'm going to create." my own way of represent our our influences through colors but also representing and bringing back that pre-hispanic influence that he has with these two symbols the the snake and also the jaguar they have been portrayed in different you are going to see them um, either in a written form uh, the jaguar and also the snake, they have different um, powers in these pre-Hispanic cultures. So what is he doing? Bringing this influence with something more um, surrealistic when it comes to the colors, and he call it a um, he call it duality. It's not just a duality and these two forces that may be opposite, one close to the sun and the other one close to the moon but the two of them complementing each other, right? Just like humans, we may have the duality as well. What, what time period were all these murals coming? Oh, that is a very good question. That time period goes from 1940s, 1950s. This uh, conception of uh, the new nation, it starts 1910 with the, the beginning of Mexican Revolution, 1920s, the ending 1927. And you have these intellectuals uh, we have in the written part, in, in poetry. But I think that the magnificent thing about murals is that I don't need to I don't need to know how to read or to write. I can see the history of my country just through murals, right? Remember, Mexico at the time, and even today, we still issues with literacy, but at that time it was even worse, right? Most of the population didn't know how to write or to read. So presenting this uh, part of, of uh, representing part of the culture <coughs> and new identity through this work, 
it was very, very important, and it's still today very important. A, um, today is, is, a, is a, I would say, is a subject in conversation uh, in any level. Either you are an intellectual, very well knowledgeable about art, or just a simple person visiting the city or any of these public spaces. I had a video of this one. This is one of my favorites. It looks so simple. And the video that I had, it looks impressive. It is impressive. This is a building, it's the National uh, Library, or it's the Library of the uh, University, the National University Autonomous of Mexico. It is a long name, and it is a large university as well. Um, to give you an idea, that is the size of the building. What is so fascinating about this, it looks so simple and it looks small, but when you see the, the, the work that these um, artists, these Gorman or Gorman, and, and it's called representation. I would say you ask about the time. I think this is the like not the closing because it's still important and it's still happening and you have still seen these uh, new muralists with this influence. But I think this is the culmination of that time, 1950s, 1960s. And uh, what uh, you may think is paint, right? Like someone was painting. Guess what it is? Anyone? Let me, let me show you. Stones. Every stone, the, the architect, and the people who worked with him in this project had to find the regions in Mexico to find the color that he wanted to put in this uh, mural. So every single thing that you see here is a stone. Mm -hmm. And every single, co single color was brought to, a, uh, to this site to do to, to, um, to do this work, to finish the work, but also what is interesting, as I said, in the video I had, you will see the magnitude of this building. Uh, the south wall of the building, it tells you a little bit about the, um, the pre-Hispanic, one of the pre-Hispanic figures, but also, do you see it's a constant, even in 1960s, the time and the period of the revolution is still important for these artists. And from there, it goes to uh, the working classes. Uh -huh. So, in each side of the building, in this case we have, uh, in the other side, we have the encounter of two worlds, the pre-Hispanic world mm -hmm, and um, the, the conquest. So, here we go. For him, it was important, like for Diego Rivera, right? But this is, and it's uh, the symbolic thing about having this mural in this library is library it is what <coughs> it is a place where we what preserve knowledge right we learn so it is um it is really really impressive as i said in the video is you will see it better and it is uh, he wanted to show also the pantheon of uh in in uh, of the hispanic cultures there or in this case the aztecs from there I'm going to switch to contemporary uh, murals. Do you have any questions about my previous uh, piece part here? Any any other about Diego Rivera? I don't know any what of those. What did Human Free of Color have? I remember we talked about it in your class. They didn't have a a mural that was like pretty relationship with each other. That was a very volcanic relationship between those two. And yeah. Rita was it was through that relationship that she kind of stood on her own, and that's the feminism. That's yes. Why she became the symbol of feminism. Of feminism. How she dealt with it, and she owned her portion of her contribution to that relationship. You know that is that that relationship has an artistic way. They always were there together. Yeah. As a husband and wife, they did it well. Frida didn't like hus, uh, Diego that they much. They only divorced for like a year. And then they That's right. right back and they, because art, right? Mm -hmm. Art always was a constant in their life. Yes. So, and I wanted to start here with contemporary uh, murals in, in Jacksonville, right? And of course, Springfield, 
where I live. So it was then when I started thinking like, wow, this is so cool. Something is happening. But it was um, the Times Union published an article about what was happening or what is happening in Jacksonville with mural, murals in, in our streets. And according to, to the uh, New York Times, it has been the last 10 years when it has been uh, the flourishing of uh, these uh, creating murals in our city. And this article, they, they count like 60, 66 murals uh -huh, in the city, I think today. That article is a little bit obsolete because <laughs> you can check last month there was an, the, probably there were two new more um, a, uh, murals in the city. Now, what is happening now with the, the uh, murals in, uh, I would say, contempo contemporary murals? What is, what is the thing? First of all, something that is fascinating about murals is that there, this, this walls, this art, it's not collectible, right? It belongs to the community. That is, that is the amazing thing, and I, that is why it got my attention. This way of expression in, in artistic language belongs to the community, right? What the artist expresses stays there. I cannot buy the wall, right? So that is that makes it unique. And um, and the story about this one, actually, I thought it was I didn't know that until I started doing more research for my presentation today. Uh, the person who bought this building is, uh, I forgot her name, but she says she wanted to have this building because the building is beautiful and for her business it was perfect. But she wanted to bring something to the community, in this case to the neighborhood. She asked the, uh, the artist, uh, Grant Thornton, to, to paint something. What you see is that is, that is the thing with, a, um, with contemporary uh, murals is what the artists perceive in the environment, in the urban, right, in the urban areas, and, um, and what, what is important to them, but it's always there evolving with the community as well. Uh -huh. It's local. And, uh, we have also still this concern, I wouldn't say concern, but interest in representing uh -huh. the, the community, the people who may not have been represented before in, in the same way. And when I say not being represented, yes, being represented, all of us have been represented, but how, right? In this case, this author, she, I mean, this um, artist, she wanted to represent not just to uh, what is being Hispanic, but also what is today being in Jacksonville, what we see, right, as people, as community, the civic form and the civic expression. And, uh, and she says it's, it's sometimes, right, even as, uh, as an artist, um, in this interview she said it was, it was sometimes a little bit harder to create a ton of a scheme that it was no, the ton of a scheme that as an artist it would be easier to, to paint. But you see the challenges as an artist as well representing uh, a diverse community. Um, and this one got, got an award actually. And what is, I think what is interesting about this is using this public space, public because it's a school, and, uh, and of course with the, uh, with the collaboration of the people in this middle school, but also the Jawors where, see is how an artist can be encouraged to be creative and to be free when they have the sources as well, right? Because having the money to do this encourages the artist. And using this wall um, has a public space to create art and to represent uh, what we are today in Jacksonville, I think is important. I like this one. This one, you are going to see it in, um, in E. Duval. It goes back to the traditional uh, we have an expert in art, but <laughs> the traditional uh, form of painting, right? Painting fruit, painting these um, uh, figures. Uh, it is, you may say, well, what, what, what we have here, right? But it's, it's having something that we have in Florida. What is it? Citruses, right? It's, 
it's always going to it's going to tell us something. Even if at the, at the beginning we say there I don't see anything there, there, there is always a story in, in all of these murals. But also it's not going to tell us just what we have here, but in the following ones you are going to see what we have in the environment, right? This fusion and this immersion, not just of that art, but also the art uh -huh, being fused with the old building. And it goes back to a fantastic creature, right? A little bit surrealistic or surreal with these old buildings. And it's, it seems that it's part of the landscape. It, is, it doesn't look, in, look intrusive. Um, so this one is going, you are going to see it in, where is it, in Davis Street as well. So any any uh, comments about this one? The first mm -hmm. you see the Springfield mural. Mm -hmm. the, uh, there's another professor here on North Campus, mm -hmm. Dr. Dr. Baxter. Mm -hmm. She made us in her class for humanities. She mm -hmm. has us walk around every one of those buildings in the letters. Those are all Kubo. Oh, the letters. So, the letters here is it says established 1869. Oh, but the houses. All the in the actual letters, those are Henry Clouseau's buildings that were built after the fire of 1902. Yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of controversy over these buildings because a lot of them have been torn down and lost their history. So I know in California, for example, when you have a building that's torn down, usually like the in my hometown, we incorporate it and the people who lived within that building into a mural, so that even though it's torn down, that history isn't taken or bleached out of our city. It's still there. And that is, that is definitely beautiful and well said. This is is uh, is the power, right, of the mural, right? That in, in going to that detail, that was that was really good. Gracias. Yeah, it's it's uh, definitely definitely something. Now, when I go to Springfield and I see that one, I would I, I would see it in a different way. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, with this mural, if you don't mind, if you can show. Yeah, uh, sure. This is uh, this one. No, no, the second. This one. Yes, this one. Is an inside mirror or outdoors mirror? That's a very good inside. question. It's inside mirror. Inside, right? It's right. inside. Like so when, when we think about murals, about uh, using public spaces, that public space can be inside mm -hmm. or outside. However, the, 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 the common denominator, I would say, is our public for the people to see them, right? They, they are available. They are open to see, right? That is, but it's inside the, the school. And then, last question. And then from there, I wanted to 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 think. If you see, it is it is more experimentation, right? With colors, with uh, <clears throat> with the geometry, with forms, with shapes. However, what is happening here in their faces? Right? Are they wearing, can you see them? No, really. It can be, it can be me. <laughs> you don't know, <laughs> right? It can be anyone, right? The universal form of whatever we want to be is right there. Uh-huh. So, but I wanted to show you this one because when we think about a local or, or artist or local creation or local mural, we'll find out that in other places, like in Mexico City, well, we have this one here too. Have you seen this one? This is a, uh, when you are in downtown <laughs> and you are going to um, uh, Riverside, you go up to this little overpass and coming back, you will see it, this is a parking lot. It, it used to be a really, really ugly looking building. Now, for some, uh, and, um, and I have some, some uh, friends who said, the city is looking beautiful because we have murals, right? And we have color. And I said, yeah, yeah, actually, you know, besides having a purpose and a message, we also have that the city is looking nicer. But also is, is, um, is using a female uh, face an expression, right? It's not just a female, but it's an expression in her face. And this goes back to this one in Mexico City. 
It's just a different way of portray a woman, and the title is called Ella, and it's Alejandra Carvajal. So, <clears throat> if you see two different artists, different perception, using a space, a public space, to <clears throat> represent a female face. Uh -huh. And in Mexico City, uh, I would say the last, it has been the last 15, 20 years, but then in the last 15 years, I would say, it has been more a, um, a structural implant to have these artists to use these public spaces, especially in neighborhoods where uh, the security is not that good, where usually the income is not that good either, where you have uh, people more exposed to violence. Uh, what they are doing is like, we are, it's called the three, <coughs> 333 plan project, where they are going to uh, the city with artists and community uh -huh. are um, going, their goal is to go to 333 <laughs> neighborhoods uh -huh, to create, to paint murals. Mm -hmm. So there is one of, one of those, and this one is in, um, in, in, a in a region where we have markets in Mexico City. Uh, so what is, what is happening is that people seeing what is happening and being involved in the, in the creation of these murals, they feel part of these buildings, right? They feel part of the community. So they are going, they are taking care of their murals. That means not just the mural, but also uh, being more aware of the things that they don't want to see in the neighborhoods and the things that they want to keep. And um, another part of the, of the mural, in, in, and it's not just uh, a Mexico City, but also here, please. We see it here and also in also Mexico City, the portrait of um, the representation of daily life, right? What do we have in Jacksonville? What, uh, what parts uh, are those parts where people have fun? It, because not everything has to be too serious, right? To, to look it. Also, we can have something as simple as having fun, but also representing the people that we have here with our super nice guest. <laughs> and um, someone says, well, that is very, very simplistic depending on what we call simplistic, right? Is there is, uh, it, it is simplistic because it's easy to understand? Or what is it? But to me it's beautiful because it takes a very simple wall and it's, it seems that this mural is being hanged from the sky, right? It's, it's part of the landscape of the city. So we have daily life, representation of daily life. We have, this one is one of my favorites. Uh, and I, I don't know if you have seen it. And the picture here is a um, is one fifty foot tall. It's very large. Have you seen it in uh, the Heart Bridge? It's impressive, and I do like the title as well. In this case, um, I think this one is uh, I forgot. It. I think it's Unity. Yeah, Unity. Uh huh. Is uh, you see these two kids, but also I wanted to keep those kids in mind right because I'm going to show you another one from another artist a local artist so when this one was painted um, uh, let me see I don't have it here but it, this one is not as contemporary as the other ones that I show you so I just wanted to keep these these uh, these kids image and of course imagine painting that have you seen that the um, these plays coming back is impressive as an artist to get there to do such a wonderful job. But also representing, you see it. What is so interesting about this, it doesn't matter where you are, you are going to see it. It's like, I'm here, right? It's, it's, I'm being represented and, and that is, I'm here to stay. Um, from that one, we go to this one. So I wanted to show you here part of what they are, uh, they representing what the economy, right? what moves also in Jacksonville, what we move in the port, what the, the shipping, the, the importance of the shipping has, because there's no any other place, it's an important place in Jacksonville, and we have 
a b to p tropocentin there. And then we have this one. This one is in Mexico City, is Quetzal. So in this one, the artist want us to see not just the landscape and the river has part of uh, uh, being part of the city of Jacksonville and being important, right? But also who habitates the, the city of Jacksonville. In this case, we have this artist, Alejandra Carvajal, and um, is a photographer, but too curious. Uh, he wants to show us it's not any other, it's not just a simple building, it's a large building as well. He's, uh, he wants to show us a, uh, and I actually I have to read because I have to read what, what a, it got intrigued me this little thing here, this little sphere. And the artist says, that is the air. It's tiny. We are so tiny in comparison to what is out there in the universe. And, and he goes back, and, and these Mexican artists, sometimes you will see that they take back these uh, mythological creatures. In this case, all the colors from the pre-Hispanic cultures again. But instead of saying, this is the most important thing, it's like, yeah, it's, this, is, this is not even the, the, the pre-Hispanic culture. For her, she says, to me, this is us, just the dust. Uh huh. Comparing to the universe, oh, oh. and I, uh, she was asked about the colors. It's like, why do you, if you see the universe as being uh, seeing the little world, why do you represent it with that? She said, because that is my cosmology. That is my reference. Uh huh. That is that is my reference as uh, the 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 Mayan and the Aztec perceived. Uh huh. The universe. So she's bringing the, the, her own experience, her own uh, reference with the Hispanic culture, with what she sees and represents the, the, the earth as that. This is the continuation of, of this, a, uh, not a continuation, but I would say bringing the past. Remember I showed you how for the muralist in the first period on Mexico, Mexican uh, mural era, uh, the Hispanic the old was important for contemporary artists uh, uh, creating murals in Mexico City. It is important as well, but in this case, they, they call it the uh, Tejedores de Sueños, Embreder of Dreams. It's uh, kind of surreal in the sense that a dream of people creating these what is it? What do you think it is? Some a club, right? Is is it is uh, in their tradition? Did did they used to bury people in clubs? Oh no, right? Is is it makes you wonder what they want to say? But besides, something that I noticed with mural and artists uh, creating murals, they don't want to tell us everything, right? They want us to interpret according. To our own experiences in our own um, uh, perception of art. Now I can say this is a public uh, wall. It is not. That is what is happening today. It's becoming kind of cool to have someone to come to your house like, please create a mural in my house, right? Before it, it was like, you're not touching my wall. So now the public becomes more like a trendy thing to see in the walls in many of these neighborhoods in Mexico City. Um, any any comment about this mural? What time was it made? Oh, this is, this, is, this is recent. This is very recent. I would say this one doesn't have more than probably eight years. Yeah. And, uh, uh, in the previous slide, yeah. I'm just wondering and in, in this one? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Is that blue dot? You said it's kind of like the dot, the yeah, the dot, right? The no, the, her representation was she said is is for for the artist. Mm -hmm. She says creating the earth that tiny. I see. There's like is 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 is, a, is, is like we are dust. You know, I the see. earth is okay. dust compared to the magnificent of the universe. Or is is uh, that is. But do you have something to say about that? That little? No? 
No, no, I, oh. I wanted to make sure because I, I understood it as the planet Earth, but I wasn't sure. If yes, it was yes, that is that is what she said. Yeah. You can go back, go back. Sure. Go back to the one you started. I like this money. Oh, it's so cool. I can so have something like I this know in my cash. In my hometown, there's a huge. I complain to town where there was a, there are a lot of field workers, and we they come here with the matricula for the seasons, and then we go back in Mexico during the winter when our plants are our fields have gotten dormant. We go one more back, and something a conversation that caught up in we have um, Manuela Venegas, she's this huge advocate for the Latin American history and culture in our town. And something that she brings up often is not it's not only what the uh, what the majority or what's traditionally been funded by you know, white Americans. It's not just white America or science's perception on what the universe looks like. Um, there's a huge movement in California for a Latino perception that a lot of people will say or look down on Latino culture in our area. It's less educated. And they're fighting saying our view of what reality is is not worth anything less than your view and your your science. And so we have a lot of these murals like this where they're putting them on large walls on purpose because they're saying we're still here and we still are our history and our perception. I think that's what this artist was. It is. Really it is driving. definitely. I mean, art. That is the fascinating thing about art, right? Art is a way to communicate, to express, right? It's a language of expression, and in that cosmology, that, that that is why I wanted to start with the Mexican muralists because they break, right? They break the the official rules, the European rules that it, art should be this, and and this this should be represented only, right? So that is the continuation of that. That that is the whole idea as an artist, like the the way that for this artist the universe has been represented, right? Doesn't need to be like for us may see it in another piece of art from different influences. Absolutely. And um, this is one of my favorites. Remember the kids that I show you in the first mural that I show you. Uh, these artists. Um, I uh, I don't know if you you went to see this artist exhibition in Kent campus. It's Christopher Clark. It was just a coincidence. I have to say it was it was a nice coincidence to see not just his uh, paintings at Kent campus, but to know that he's also creating murals in um, in Jacksonville. And also I found a nice interview. I say nice because it was it was like finding a treasure. He says that um, his art, in this case, his murals, were important to him, but also it's important to him to represent the youth, a youth that can see themselves reflected in our walls, in the city, in the art in the city, in the streets of our city. And he wants to represent this. He says, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not making up anything. This youth is already there, and I want to portray them the way that they are in a positive, uh -huh, <coughs> in a positive way. So, in a, in a, when, specifically this one, he says, I want. Uh, he says when people come and see this mural, they say, "That's that's my cousin. He looks like my brother, right? He looks like my friend." So it's. Um, I thought it was it was a very very good message in a, in a very honest way of um, talking about his art. So that is why when you saw the, the other kids is yes, you we see those kids in the in the previous um, mural, but their expression is stoic a little bit, right? When you see these, this is an expression of not just the expression of his eyes, but you see also the environment, right? The landscape where this uh, this kid is at. Although you see also the landscape, of course, the the urban, the urban, um, and this is another one. My I have a question. There yes. Was, uh, a picture of uh -huh. the cliff, the cliffs, like the tower set by the hard bridge. Uh huh. Uh huh. And uh, it was going like yeah, because I, I mean I I don't recall seeing that anymore. That uh -huh. It was like on the two. So yeah, it's the one. It's still there. It's still there. It's still there. Okay. It's still there. Of okay. course, this one. I I don't know if it is the same uh, kid, but no, I think those are different kids. Yeah. But yeah. the ones that you. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Like when you come up 
Oh, yes, and, and that is what I said. Uh, probably you were not here. You were, but there, I have those here. So these kids are kind of uh, not much expression in it. Mm. Not much. Not not. They are not doing that much. They are just like uh, figures, right? Posing for uh, a mural. In this case, the these a um, these a um, images. They're engaged, right? They are doing something. They are telling us something. Uh huh. And my husband says, what, what are you doing? I said, looking at the sun, being curious, whatever you want to think of it. What would you think with this, uh, with this uh, mural? When you see these two kids? There is something definitely, right? There, 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 is, there is an action there in, that, in, the, in this image. And then we have, so <clears throat> the same way that this artist, Clark, mentions about it's important that it's important for him to represent the youth uh -huh, in a positive way. The same thing going back to these um, what is going on also in Mexico City uh, with the 33 uh, neighborhoods, I, 333 neighborhoods. I told you it is important for these artists to represent the youth uh -huh, in a positive way, but also has uh, a symbol of hope. Mm -hmm. And then we have, is, this is important, that I, I wanted to show you this one, because it is happening here, just with what you say, uh, is recalling or retaking, uh, reclaiming those public spaces that once upon a time were abandoned for whatever reason. And this one is one of those. This market has been in Mexico City, I would say for hundreds and hundreds of years. Of course, it didn't start with Walt and all of that, but it has been there for a long time. So <clears throat> what the, the community did is like they wanted to have to retake this building to have art, but not, not just to create art to make it look pretty, but they wanted to tell their story. How did they start being in that place? And, uh, and what you see here is the representation, not just the, the geography of the, of the city surrounded by volcanoes, but also what they used to do before. They used to recollect flowers. They used to, uh, they used to live also and be sur being surrounded by nature, right? This is the transformation of, the, of, the, of the, their space to a uh, urban, uh -huh, a little bit less, um, I would say, friendly environment. But they're still there. They're still there and they are still through generations, these people have been there, and they they call it actually Jamaica revived. Jamaica is a high biscuit, and it's a flower. Uh huh. So, um, and it's uh, and it's located in the Jamaica or Jamaica market in Mexico City. And now uh, it's a it's a large large market. And from there, so if you see, we are we are talking about not just the murals and, and what we see in the murals. But the things that artists have been using is a constant, right? Identity, right? Uh, reclaiming part of, of those spaces, public spaces. We are talking about representation, representation, not just of those who already have been represented, but those who have not been represented in, in a positive way. So we're taking that also part of the identity, we're taking these spaces. But I like these. My sister said, like, I know what it is. It is, do you remember the lady who used to sell tacos in that corner in this neighborhood? No, I saw it. I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. Then she was right. So today we see artists not just being interested to, to use those spaces, to make those, those pretty for representation, to retake back, to talk about history, it, but also something that is concerning more and more uh, young artists in communities, which is uh, resources, right? In this case, uh, either food resources, water resources. This is another, another project in Mexico City that, a, uh, and that started with the community, by the way, the civic, uh, a coming together and saying, we need, we need to do something. Let's start with talking about what is Mexico City. We don't have water anymore. We are a dry city. It's hard. Our rivers are dry, right? So 
in water in Mexico City, like in many places, and probably will be important for us as well, sometimes water. So that is the, that was the theme of these. Uh, I don't remember how many uh, artists participated in these a um, creation of murals, but you see, of course, this one is 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 mainly a the the, the portrait of marine life has a main language and in the art and the expression but this is one of my favorites because it is the urgence to to do something for the environment for the water as a resource as mo one of the most important resources is the, the 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 image is not enough for the artist right it's using language right written language in case this artist she She's like, okay, you can interpret these the way that you want to, it's fine. But I want to be sure that you know that this also represents, an issue represents for her. Uh, it says, someone wants to translate this for me? For the magic, uh -huh. for the magia that existed in the restaurant mall. Uh -huh. For the magic that we had in our seats. And she ends where? Uh, Take care of our water. Take care of our water. Muy bien, Professor. Bravo, bravo. Uh -huh. So, and, um, and this is, I, I, I will let you, uh, I will finish my presentation with this because I think that is what we are going to see more and more the engaging. But it takes us back to who? Diego Rivera, right? Diego Rivera already talking to us and painting for us his concern in the presentation of water has what? Has the origin of life, right? So, that is my sources. And, it's a fin. Gracias por asistir. Thank you for coming. Gracias.